Hi, it's Dr. Steve Weiner. I'm in Santa Rosa Beach, Florida, and I want to talk to you about an event that occurred in my office uh, last week, and it was ACE-associated angioedema, angiotensin converting enzyme, which is a blood pressure pill that many people take. This is the way the patient presented three hours after she was injected with a hyaluronic acid filler. She said she started having a little tingling in her lips, and then it rapidly progressed to swelling. I've seen this before. I didn't freak out. I treated it appropriately, and she got better with appropriate medications. But I want to go through the pathophysiology of this. So angioedema is localized swelling that's usually self-limited for up to 72 hours. It most often involves the loose connective tissue of the face, lips, mouth, throat. Sometimes it can cause airway obstruction, sometimes even in the tongue but it can also involve the GI tract, which is much more rare. It can be recurrent. It is usually precipitated by minor trauma, but it can occur spontaneously. There is an absence of deuterocaria, itching and hives in most cases, but some of the cases are related to that. So in my case, she didn't have that. So it was not an allergic reaction that precipitated. So angioedema occurs in the general population 10 to 15% in their lifetime. There's a higher incidence in African American women. There's also a higher incidence in patients who take non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, who smoke, who are obese, or have seasonal allergies. So there's several different types of angioedema. There's idiopathic, means we don't know what the cause is. That's 38%. There's an allergic IgE-mediated angioedema. And that is triggered by food or medication taken one hour prior. There's a hereditary type. There's actually three types of those. And they're all related to C1 inhibitor problems, dysfunction, low levels, or unregulated vasoactive meteors, bradykinin, kilocrine, and plasmin. There's an acquired angioedema, where you have C1 inhibitor antibodies, or it gets degraded. And then there's ACE-induced, bradykinin-mediated angioedema, which is 30 to 40% of the cases that presents to the emergency room. So ACE-related angioedema, there's three um, ACE uh, inhibitors on the market. There's enalapril, which is 54% of the angioedemas. There's ramipril, which is 15%. And there's lisinopril, 14%. My patient was taking lisinopril. It occurs in 0.1 to 0.7 patients who take ACE inhibitors. It's five times greater in the African descent patients. Keep that in mind. There is an ACE-related cough that occurs in some patients, and angioedema is more common in those patients. So what does ACE do? It causes an elevated level of bradykinin and substance P. Those are vasoactive peptides, which cause dilation of the blood vessels and leakage of the blood vessels leading to edema. More likely in patients who have low level an enzyme that degrades bradykinin, and those are your African descent patients, and it's not dose related. A little more about ACE related angioedema. So it can occur early, and in the cases that present, two thirds of them have been taking a medication for three months or less, but it can also occur years after taking it. It can also occur after stopping the medication. And I've seen that case in my residency. Episodes can uh, gradually become worse over time. Typically, the swelling develops over minutes to hours. There are also other drugs, not ACE-related, like Efexor and Tamoxifen. Both of those have caused angioedema on my patients in my office. This patient was also taking Efexor. So in general, lab tests aren't usually needed to get the diagnosis, but if this patient has a recurrent problem and you don't know why, then you get these lab tests. You get C1 inhibitor levels, you get complement levels, C4 and C1Q. You get tryptase level because they're elevated in allergic angioedema. But my experience has shown that these studies are kind of hard to get, they're expensive, and they don't improve the ability to diagnose the patient. So treatment. So obviously this patient didn't have an airway issue, but occasionally there is an airway issue when it affects 
the larynx, or tongue. That's when we were involved in our residency because we were the airway experts. So you must establish the airway. Standard therapy, although there are no controls, is giving steroids, either IM or IV, and Decadron would be the steroid of choice, H1 and H2 blockers, and occasionally epinephrine. This medication called echolantide, it blocks kilocrinin activity. So that results in less bradykinin. There's another one called ikatapa, which is a bradykinin receptor antagonist. Okay, these are only been studied in hereditary recurrent angioedema. So there's conflicting data in whether these are useful in ACE-related angioedema. So fresh frozen plasma has been shown to be effective because it uh, improves the complement cascade. C1 inhibitor concentrate has been used. Transexamic acid has been used. And there's a new one that was recently approved called Barotrilast, recently approved, and it's for uh, hereditary angioedema. And it's an oral form where all the others aren't. And it binds to the kilocrine to prevent its proteolytic activity resulting in less bradykinin. Bradykinin is the culprit here. So here is my patient. So when she presented back into the office three hours after injection, she was like this. Then she was given therapy, and I'll go through that in a second, and she sent us a photo 10 hours later, and there wasn't much improvement. The following morning, she was improved. Not completely, but improved. And then 72 hours later, she was back to her baseline. So what did we do for treatment? I gave her an IM dose of Decadron, six milligrams. So my dosing would probably be anywhere from four milligrams to 10 milligrams, depending on the pre-existing medical conditions uh, and the size of the patient. I gave her Pepsid, which is um, an H2 blocker, 20 milligrams twice a day. I gave her Benadryl, H1 blocker, 25 milligrams twice a day. The following day, uh, she dosed herself at home with 60 milligrams of prednisone. And then the next day, she was given 40 milligrams of prednisone. We spoke to the patient on the phone uh, following that 40 milligram dose, and she said there was complete resolution, so we stopped all therapy after that. I told her to go see her internist to change her medications, which included the lisinopril and the effexor, to something that won't cause the ACE-related angioedema. So I just want to present that case. It's happened to me approximately five times in the past 15 years. All patients did extremely well with therapy, but it's something you need to be aware of because it will occur in your patients. Thank you, Dr. Weiner. Signing off.